looks like the day has come. Uh, Sierra is sold. Uh, this bike means a lot to me from uh, the fact that it uh, was one of the first ones I 100% built, all the machining and welding and fab myself. I always had a great group of people around me to fill those gaps, but uh, this one, uh, I just don't ride it. That's what it simply comes down to. So I'm going to let it go to a friend of mine out in uh, Vegas. going to actually put some miles on it. So Jason, welcome to your new motorcycle. Let's go over some of the maintenance items and uh, talk about things you need to think about. You know, when it comes to whole chopper world, they get a really bad rap because people just don't maintain them. Or I really feel a lot of times it's a lack of knowledge. Uh, everything's rigid mounted. So, I mean, this thing vibrates and shakes like crazy. You got a 107 inch motor, six speed transmission. She scoots. So, let's look at some of those things that will tend to come loose. Every nut and bolt. <laughs> you just need to check stuff more often than you would on a regular motorcycle. I'm going to just start one side of the bike and work my way around. Headlight, just did a video on replacing that. They tend to uh, shake so much they don't have long life. Highly recommend an LED conversion and be, uh, or an HID conversion be outstanding. Uh, this trim ring, a lot of people silicone them in. I don't because it makes it really, really hard to get out uh, due to the high failure rate of the vibrating bulb. I like to be able to take it off fairly easy. So this is something that will uh, possibly vibrate loose. Just need to check it over time. Just when you go and ride, grab a hold of it, make sure she's good. Um, maintenance as far as the fluids, cables, everything else, pretty much going to follow Harley Davidson soft tail uh, service manual. Be good on any of that. Uh, you know, fender fenders are something that really especially shake, especially when it's a real long fender like this. These are really prone to cracking right here when you have all this weight. This isn't a cheap fiberglass. This is heavy, like uh, 16 gauge, 18 gauge steel. I don't recall, but I mean, it's American made. You know, great product, but at the weight here this is an area you need to watch this one's never had any issues but i think one big reason is i welded the fork mounts these have tiny little quarter 20 screws that come loose there's less than half inch of thread contact in there and they break and shear and it, it just all this weight creates a big problem so these are something i check over time i especially just can't stress enough anything that's ever a countersunk bolt these come loose the, the countersunk design from the seat to the to the bracket or whatever you're bolting to, they're just known to come loose compared to your traditional flat surface bolts. Um, even bolts like this in your fender, you know, check them, tighten them over time. On this particular bike, the design of this, you can see the rotor here is full of countersunks. That's something that needs to be uh, taken a look at. Let's keep on working our way around. Uh, turn signals and turn signals are something these I've seen kind of rotate a little bit. They're hard to get really tight with the little bracket design there. I do have some specialty tools I'm going to include since I'm thinking about it now. This tool right here is when you disassemble the fork underneath here inside these big covers to get the fork cap off, that's what this tool's for. So that is included. Another specialty tool here I have. Kind of funny. Really crude and rude. But this is a rear motor mount tool I made and what this is is it's able to get onto this rear motor mount down here so I'm underneath see if I can do this one-handed I'm underneath that nut okay I'm on the bolt side of that underneath so that I can then get a regular traditional uh, crow foot on there crow's foot wrench and then tighten up that motor mount motor mounts are something that come loose on these rigid mounted cycles. I mean, even in the Harley Davidson service manual, this top motor mount is specifically a maintenance item to be checked due to the vibration. So I have this bike has these four big Allens. This is a twin cam engine Evo frame in this bracket here. I have never seen these come loose, these big Allens. It doesn't mean you can't, you know, put a wrench on there and check it, but those four there, a matter of fact, these have not come loose, but it is something you need to check. And then under the oil filter, there's two uh, motor mounts here as well. Here's your oil filter for servicing. Spark plugs, obviously no big deal. Uh, but check all these motor mount bolts over time. While I'm over here, always turn the fuel off. Rear is off. On is down. You saw it fill up. Reserve is forward. Uh, don't leave your fuel on. This is not a vacuum-operated petcock. It'll flood the system and you're going to have nothing but problems. 
foot pegs and controls or something that need checked over time they can tend to come loose same thing with your passenger pegs these these always kind of worry me because you're on a really short stud and you want to make sure your passenger doesn't step on this to climb on the motorcycle get on the motorcycle these are to rest your feet they're not intended to stand on foot pegs are meant to rest on not to stand on by their design uh, no fluid in here this is converted to a belt drive rated to 150 horsepower uh, BDL kick ass it's great uh, I did shim these covers so that air can get in here and actually help cool it the drain bolt is also removed so pretty cool system you have to worry about your pant legs or anything else so this bike was built with a sproder setup where the brake and rear rotor are the same chain drive conversion so that the wheels could be super aligned and and the bike has a really good balance for a 250 millimeter rear tire um, it's, it's not too bad coming from a sport bike world that's saying a lot um, there is a chain guide roller down here that I built in here and that is literally off of dirt bikes so that's a moose racing part number that can be replaced over time this is your chain guide love it. it does have air suspension on this so you can see there's a set of air shocks underneath which are way cool American made high tech all uh, American o-rings and products in there there is an air pump hidden back in the splash guard inside of here. Um, all right, let's go make sure I covered this. This is the transmission fill plug, okay? Just like a Harley Davidson design. On this bike, the bike needs to be straight up and down. It cannot be on the kickstand. And you just set this on here, and there's a, there's a low and high mark on there. When you change the fluid, there's a drain bolt right here. The bike, once again, needs to be propped up, if anything, even tipped a little bit to the right side. You can see the pipe sealant on there. I'm kind of excess and freak about that. Uh, just use a piece of cardboard to keep it off everything else. Dump it into your oil pan. It takes 22 to 24 ounces. If you put anything more in that, it's going to leak. It's going to puke out. Um, a lot of people think that this is a quart, and it's not. That's too much. And it's actually just taking horsepower away, by the way, too. I do want to show something on sh soft tail shocks that I feel is something I see wrong a lot. And see if this surprises you. Do you see that washer spins? See that's loose? Or appears to be loose? See that? Okay, and everything in your normal brain would say, oh, wow, something's wrong. That is correct. That's what happens here is if you were to have too short a bolt without the correct dowel spacer in there and suck this, which is the shoulder of the bolt on this particular uh, example, and suck that all the way down tight and torque it to spec, every time the shock moves, it's going to twist that bolt, which will allow it to actually come loose. This thing is, this thing is torqued in there. I use anti-seize instead of Loctite. This is a maintenance item. These are three-quarter inch. Uh, wrench to put on these you just check them over time uh, you know I'd say every you know oil change put a wrench on these and verify that these are that these are tight and good this is correct don't let someone change it put a spacer in there you're gonna have problems now the rear side of it okay the heim joint back here this is tight because it is all spaced with these washers and then an aluminum spacer on this side that moves with the swing arm, it does need to be tight. So that is correct and normal. So that's something uh, to educate you there. All right, we got a idle adjuster here on the carburetor. Another thing I really learned, and, and to be honest, pretty recently about this, is that a lot of your Harley Davidson, you idle them real low. And on this, this has SNS decomp performance cams in there. We have automatic decompressors on there. They do not like to idle low. It'll pop and hiss. I mean, I fought that thing for a year. I must have cleaned the carb 10 times, researched it like crazy, and just was not having any luck. I pulled the exhaust off, checked for cracks, pressure tested them, checked the intake, and no kidding, the guys not Susie Power Sports uh, said, turn the idle up. Turn the idle up, problem gone. It just kept bumping the decomp and the cam. So something really interesting on there. If anybody has any comments or thoughts on that, please share. Uh, all right, keep going around here. This spike, I've got the speedo and oil pressure here. Check your oil pressure, can't stress that enough. Uh, here's the other side of that motor mount. Controls are just stock Harley-Davidson controls. Want the bike to be you know, usable and uh, easy resell as well. Uh, brake fluids. I Okay, take a look at this. I've got DOT four brake fluid in this one, 
and I have DOT 5 in the rear brake. So that's another thing to think about. And you'll know right away by the fact of, well, this is this is my bike here. It's purple in there and it's a brown brake fluid in here. So uh, the master cylinder I happened to get was off a bike with analog brakes. So it has uh, the DOT4 in there. Thinking about this now, it would have been much more convenient on this build to use a, a master cylinder that had five in it. Um, anyway, so that's that. Uh, Nothing special about the controls there. We'll show the gas cap. This is a Jesse James gas tank, tank just modified. Just pop that up. That pops up and then unthread it. These things rattle, make noise. Uh, there's no way around it because of the vent. I shouldn't say no way. I thought about O-ringing it and putting a hole in the center, but didn't want gas to pop out. So uh, I stick a little business card in there. Sometimes when I'm riding, it makes it go away when it's too annoying. Another thing that's common to be a problem on choppers are your, mo your uh, gas tank mounts. I used really heavy duty uh, metal, like it wasn't quite half inch, but dang near half inch steel welded to the frame. These are rubber mounted, okay? You can see that little bit of flex hopefully in there. That's intentional, so the tank is rubber mounted. But these do vibrate loose, got lock washers on there. and. Highly recommend that these are, the rubbers in here are replaced every year. Uh, it would Every year just be a great thing to do. Put new four new rubbers in there. It's stupid easy, fast, and you'll be good. When the rubbers wear out completely, then you're going to get metal to metal banging, and that's typically what will typically uh, crack. This tank is so well built. It has this welded in solid steel gusset. I mean, it is solid. It's a big reason I went with it. There's nothing tinny or cheap about this. These Jesse James gas tanks were awesome. Uh, and then the thickness of the metal on this. You probably never see a problem on this bike, but I'm also using this as a teaching opportunity to get people to think about some of the problems that you have with choppers. You know, guys, here's this is I'm making this video for my customer, for my friend, so that he cannot have problems. This is an education piece. You know, the fact that he's really gonna have the ins and outs of this motorcycle should be very helpful. Another thing, thinking uh, thinking about potential problems, and obviously I can't cover everything in the world. These exhaust nuts, okay? They can vibrate loose, okay? A lot of people will put Loctite on there, and sometimes if I have a customer like I know is not gonna maintain their bike, I'm not gonna lie, I get loctite too. On my bike and on people I can get to know to maintain their motorcycles, those are just anti-seized. It's an exhaust, so it's going to get super hot. I want to be able to take it off easy in the future, so I anti-seize them. But what that means is they need tightened up every so often. So with every oil change, this is another one of those quote-unquote critical fasteners that I go in. I use a swivel head socket uh, that's already got a universal joint on it, if you will. And I use some electrical tape to kind of just hold it on to my ratchet, get it up in there, and then snug them down. So, uh, no problems. That's a great way to, to be able to handle that. All right, boy, preparation is the, the key to not having trouble here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the seat off. You're going to see up in the front of the motorcycle, I keep a legend to the uh, fuse panel. A little laminated sheet, which is pretty cool for choppers. Most people get in their work on my work on customers, I'm like, holy cow, I'm tracing wires and being a real big pain. So this is what I did for mine. I think you'll like what I did too. Then I just keep a couple extra fuses and then the Allen wrench to the seat up in here. So it's really super easy access. I went ahead and loosened the bolt already. Take the bolt out of the rear, just simply pull it back. There's a tab right here that locks into the frame. So that's how you remove your uh, seat access. Check out my wiring here. This really turned out nice and clean. And I'm gonna focus here on this fuse panel. So you remember a few minutes ago, I showed this legend. There's an up, obviously stating what direction. This is actually off a marine uh, industry item off a boat. Love it because it was super extremely well built for uh, protection against the elements. So you take your cover off, you can see there's a couple of tabs down on the bottom here. You want to hook those first and then snap it into place so you don't break it. So, like I said, everything's labeled, super clean. Nice, good to go. Another problem over time is battery terminals can come loose. This will require a Harley-Davidson battery unless somebody knows of a brand out there differently because I have dual posts and both posts need to be used. I run two ground straps to anything I build when I work on something for a customer, I highly suggest it. I have one to the frame and one to the engine. 
super heavy duty. I have three on this one because I have one that goes back to the a dedicated one to the fuse panel as well. And I also have uh, two powers. One dedicated to the fuse panel and then a big one that goes down to the starter stud terminal uh, for power wired typically just like a Harley Davidson. Uh, turn signal flasher, headlight relay, uh, got a couple of um, circuit breakers in here. This one's a main over here. We got a 30 amp and then this one is individually for ignition. There is another 15 amp one down the splash guard for the air ride. So that's another thing we have going there. You can kind of see some extra protection covering the positive cable up from hitting the seat or anything. To start this motorcycle. Let's go over some of the operations of that. This bike is equipped with an accelerator pump. So what's your best bet to do here? We're gonna turn the gas to on. We're gonna pull the full choke. And what I like to do is hit the accelerator pump like three times, wait a second, so the carburetor will refill. Okay, I'm in the habit of, got to turn the key on too. I'm in the habit of pulling the clutch because I just do that on every bike. I think it's a good practice. But go ahead and. Uh, show how to run the air ride too. When parking the bike, you can't stress enough, shut the fuel in the off position. Now that the bike's been warmed up, I'm going to show you how to check the oil level too. And what you want to do is you want the bike to be straight up and down, which it's best if you have someone to kind of give you a hand here. I'm just going to show the theory of it here. So you can see we need to be above that line in here. And there's, there's two lines on here. This one, this one. We're used to that on most motorcycles is to put between the two lines. Do not fill this all the way up to here. The design of this bike, you want to be just above this line. If you're all the way up here, you'll suck oil into the breather, which will suck into the engine and just give you problems. If you put it just above here, you're going to be between three and three and a half quarts. That's a great place to be with the bike straight up and down. So make sure we're dang clear on that. This front wheel uses a hidden axle setup. So that bottom cap right there, literally the pair of these are what's holding on the front axle. So you want to make sure that those are snugged up with. Now these did get Loctited and just absolutely make it sure they're not loose. And that was a quarter inch Allen wrench on that one. The axle itself, once both those covers are off for when you go to have a tire change, is sandwiched in between the bearings there and you'll see once it's apart there's a place to grab onto it with flat. So you jack the bike up, you remove the brake, you take both those caps off and the front wheel can slide out with the whole axle as an assembly. And it has precision machine spacers in between there, right there, that matter from left to right so don't mix them up. That'll put that rotor right dead set in the middle of that brake. Let's look into the rear. How are you going to adjust the chain on this? The chain system is pretty traditional, common to a lot of motorcycles, is that you're going to loosen the axle and then there's hidden Allen screws in here that you're going to push the chain back and forth. You can see there's quite a bit of room left on here. 
to be able to uh, adjust that chain. Uh, let's make sure you're understanding too that there is one hidden behind the bag on this side. Okay, so down inside along that brake there. Another thing that has to be done on this is that because of this brake setup, you're going to have to get this bag out of your way. What I do is take the top straps off and just hinge it forward. These two Allen bolts right here. So loot, once again, checklist. Loosen axle. Loosen these two Allen bolts. Take your Allens evenly, moving the wheel back to tension the chain. Once you get your chain tension correct, you can torque your axle and torque these two bolts and your chain will be adjusted. Here's another area I took the bag off from the headlight. Anytime you have any type of cover, think about how it could come loose. So in this case right here, this is just a big, and these are a little, little loose. So this is just a cover. And if this were to rattle loose enough, it would end up smacking down on the bottom of this. So this is something here that you want to uh, go ahead and snug up, try and keep it in line here. And what I'll do, obviously, is check all of them. People say, well, why not Loctite that? Man, how are you going to get out? when you need to go work on it. That is not something well, you want to do. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, especially Jason, you know, this was ultimately for you as a customer to be able to know what to do to this motorcycle since there is no official service manual on choppers. And, uh, man, I want to go see you put on thousands of trouble-free miles. I feel like you should be equipped now to deal with the common things that we find in this industry. You know, uh, the rest, of you, uh, the rest of you people out there watching this channel, you know, hopefully you're learning some things or, or maybe you have something to add. Maybe there's something you've had a, you know, a good experience with rigids or hardtails, if you will. Uh, the chopper scene, cafe bikes, that's another thing. People are making a lot of modifications uh, to these. And you've seen things that commonly fail. And I think everybody pretty much agree. Most of the times it's because it's being overlooked or not caught within that service interval. You just can't take engine motor mounts on a rigid and go 50,000 miles. It's not going to happen. You know, this isn't your rubber mounted car engine or whatnot. So, uh, the other thing uh, to think about here is that we, uh, it's really dangerous to break down. We need to be catching this stuff. If you're not having your motorcycle professionally inspected at regular intervals, you're taking a big risk. Uh, if you are doing it yourself, hey man, I commend you. That's great. Keep turning wrenches. Probably following the channel for that reason. But this stuff cannot be overlooked. These are all must-do items. Nothing on here was like, oh, that'd be nice. These are things you really need to do so that you can avoid, you know, I mean, we can't control everything. We're not, you know, I uh, can't say we can't ever have a part not break, but to have something fail just because we didn't look at it or inspect it, you know, in that certain time frame, uh, that's, that's pretty foolish. So, uh, I really hope you enjoy the channel. If you have any comments you want to add, put them down in the comments. Uh, maybe something I didn't cover. Maybe something you've got a great idea on uh, that needs to be shared to the world. And then uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, love to have you as a subscriber, uh, being part of this uh, mechanical community. Uh, we have a bunch of seasoned techs on here that make comments and, and just make it better. Uh, you know, I, I don't know everything. That's for dang sure. So... Um, but I do have a lot of information that I'm passionate about sharing. Uh, if you've never had a chance to check out my checklist speech, uh, you know, that's what really put my, my, my heart on fire to share information. So I guess, man, Sierra, you're going to a good home, I hope. Uh, Jason, take care of her. Um, I'm going to miss you. It's crazy. We get so attached to things like having crazy second thoughts, but I think we just need to build a, build another bike and, uh, and move on so uh, it'd be nice to see some miles get put on this thing anyway uh to all of you uh just make it a great day keep wrenching and uh, we'll see you soon if you like what you see here would you please share it i'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh technical education and uh um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship so keep on wrenching and we'll see you again in the future thanks for being a subscriber and